Hello, today we are talking about some Canva hacks and I don't know if I would really call them hacks, more so tips and things to make your life easier. Um, so let's jump in. First, I want to talk about making posts and we are not gonna make them from scratch. We're gonna make our life easier. So. We're gonna come up here and create a design. We are going to do a square Instagram post. This thing is gonna pop up every time I open a tab over here, by the way, so sorry if it gets in the way of anything. Um, next, we are going to, we wanna make a list, let's say. Let's say we wanna make a checklist. So instead of just like starting from scratch and being like, okay, we're adding a text and we're like, okay, checklist, and then, oh, how do I make this prettier? Here's what we're gonna do. Delete that, um, which just reminded me of another tip. So I'm gonna write that on my list and we're gonna get to that uh, after this one. So we are gonna scroll through these templates. These ones with the crown are pro. I would recommend having Canva Pro. It is like $120 a year and it is so freaking worth it. And if you are using it for work and you're self-employed, it is a deductible expense because you are using it for your business. So it's a business expense. So you're gonna scroll through here and it doesn't need to be something you absolutely love, but it needs to be something where, okay, yeah, I'm fine with that, but I'll maybe change a picture out or something. Okay, so let's say we like this one, coffee. <laughs> Next, we are going to just duplicate the page so that we can look back on this. Um, I actually learned this tip from Creative Bodega. So if you want to follow her or look up any of her YouTube videos, highly recommend. Um, her name is Emily and I will have to tag her and I'll put her information in the description of this video because I can't remember off the top of my head. So we're gonna move forward. Um, so maybe we want to call this buyer checklist. Okay, so we are just going to adjust some information here and that is not centered, definitely not. All right, so we're gonna write pre-approval. We're gonna keep a lot of this generally the same. So if you look at this and you'll notice that, well, this is not a great example because it's kind of hard to tell, but this one right here is a serif font and this one is the same font. So for example, you might wanna keep these both the same font instead of switching out everything because that will change how it looks. Um, it might look better, who knows, but let's just try something else, for example. So this is already just going to look a little bit different just based off of those fonts. So we're gonna go back. Um, I'm just saying if this were like a serif font and this were a sans serif, the way that you know is it has these little tails on it. So I will show you the difference on a really obvious one. Um, okay, let's go. You can even type in here, serif. So this is a better example. So you can see on the Y, it has these little tails on it. And then a sans serif, sans means without. So um, this one does not have any tails on it. It's just straight, flat. All right, delete. So we're gonna say pre-approval, fire consult. If I could spell, that would be great. Coffee. I just love it, oh my gosh. Showings, offer. I'm just putting in relevant things here so that we can kind of have a better idea of what it might look like if an agent puts it in here. Alrighty, um, this is kind of a cute template actually because it shows like, okay, maybe we're up to this point but we don't have accepted offer yet. Anyways, um, you'll notice that this picture takes up the entire background and it's mostly just blank space from here up. So when we go to find a picture, say we look up home, home, interior design, kitchen, bathroom, like anything specific, those are some of my favorite um, 
favorite words to use. I don't like to use a lot of these pictures of outsides of houses because I'm in Wisconsin and our houses in Wisconsin don't look like this. So I prefer to use um, the inside of homes, for example, because like some of these could be anywhere. Maybe not, maybe not this one. But anyways, those, that's just an example. You can, there's suggested ones, home interior, home decor. Um, sometimes I'll type in cozy home. If I'm looking for something, that's really cute. Um, if we are looking for something that kind of has like a winter feel or a fall feel, sometimes I'll put in winter home and you'll get some nice ones. Um, again, I don't really love to use the outside ones, but like these ones right here are really nice. So anyways, maybe we'll try like simple home since I'm looking for white space. Um, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you a bad example. So if I pull this in, we, it already looks so much different and it kind of goes against the whole point of having the blank space on the top. So you're going to want to find like a similar picture. So this one has a lot of blank space. You could throw that in there and try it and maybe it's too much blank space. But another thing we could do is flip this image horizontally because it looks like we have a little bit more um, room on the right side but you'll just kind of play around with it and see what works best like this one for example this one would work pretty well we can expand that a little bit to have a little more room in there but let's say we like that one all right great we like that one now anytime you and you can go ahead and delete this one because when you're looking for your files you'll see the first page first um, in your thumbnails, for example, when you're down here. So if you have multiple pages, you'll see the first page first in your thumbnail. So if you're pretty happy with this and you, let's say you put your information down there, Marissa Miller, realtor, I would normally put the copyright little R, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go hunt it down. <laughs> so anyways, you would put that information there. I obviously would adjust it. It wouldn't be this big, but I'm trying to zoom through this. So anyways, we're happy with this. Maybe we want to throw our picture on there. Uh, let's go find a picture. And this is going to be, this is one of those things that I really need to do is <laughs> put my picture in a spot that is better access because I am having to scroll down so freaking far just to find my headshot and it's very annoying um me and my brothers actually did a retro photo shoot so that's what all of these are they're like our old pictures versus versus new so if you're wondering like what the heck are those um that's what that is anyways this is the picture i normally use on stuff i put it into canva i did background remover and then i saved it as a png with a transparent background which is probably another thing I should show you how to do. I don't know if it'll be in this video, but that is like a must. So anyways, we have this nice little template and we're so happy with it. And we're gonna call this, oh, we're gonna call it checklist. Okay, sure. So we'll say checklist. I was gonna maybe change the name, but that's actually good. Checklist. So then when we're out and about and we're coming up with new content, Maybe we're like, oh, I really, I really need to make another checklist. Instead of going into a new post and reinventing the wheel every single time, we are just going to go up here and say duplicate page. And then maybe this one is seller checklist. And this could be like a maintenance checklist or any type of checklist um, that you want to make. And then pretty much all we're going to do is switch out the background picture. So we're going to come over here and we're going to look for something pretty similar. Um, simple home is what I looked up. All right. Let's see. It could even be as simple as that. Those are two different posts. Um, we could we could go back in with this one. Maybe we really like that one. And, you know, those already look like two different posts, but they're cohesive. So you kind of have like a theme going on and your branding is still intact. You could switch out your picture. Um, another thing I like to do if the picture is just like way too overpowering. I don't know if this one will be. Okay, yeah. So 
Um, I'm getting to this, but you'll add a rectangle, which is literally all you just have to press on your keyboard is R and a rectangle or square will come up. We're going to drag it over the top of the entire thing. And then we are going to create just a flat color. We're going to choose this flat kind of tan color, go to position, move it to the back. And then we are going to change the transparency. So um, we can adjust the transparency. So maybe we can see through a little bit better. And then maybe we just change these to a darker color. But even just that alone will help us to see the background a little bit better, but also be able to see the words. So it'll be more than just a flat color in the background. Another thing you can do is just take down the transparency of the photo itself, and that will be against white. So if you don't want it white, that's why you can add another color on top of it. Otherwise, if you're fine with white, you can take it down like that. Alrighty. So next, 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 we're going to go to brand section. So when you go out to the main um, dashboard in Canva, you're going to come over here to this left hand side and click on brand. And this is where you can add brand colors and um, logos and a whole bunch of other stuff. So you can add your logo up here. I have two different sets of brand colors. This was my original one, this natural pink, and then the nature colors is my latest. So I use these blues and greens quite a bit. And then also these tans. I don't use the dark green so much anymore, but you can set this so that when you're in here and you are picking from colors, you've got your brand kit right here. So you're picking similar colors every single time. I also really like the photo colors because it just kind of gives like a cohesive look. It'll pick something from the background and then you will be able to just apply that. But for example, you can add in fonts, brand fonts as well. So if you use certain fonts with, you know, all of your same stuff and you want them to be same across the board, you can use that. You can also add a brand voice now, which I haven't done yet. And then you can add photos. So I just have this photo of my headshot in there right now. Um, so that is another thing you can do. Brand colors, I think, is the biggest thing you're going to want to set up and play with because it just makes life a lot easier and allows you to stay pretty consistent without having to do a lot of work or think outside the box too much. All right, next I am going to show you. We'll just click back to the dashboard. Next, I'm going to show you you're a real estate agent and you just saw how crazy my uploads folder gets and let's say you are working on a new listing this is one way to make your life so much easier so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the projects tab and then we're going to click on folders and we're going to add a new folder and we are just going to call this one two three main street for now i usually like to put the seller name in there too just so it stays super organized and then we're going to say continue so it's going to create a folder for us we're going to say open and then we are going to go to upload go to documents i'm clicking on a previous listing that i had we're just going to select them all and upload every single dang one <laughs> because you know, I need them for the social media posts. Maybe I'm making a video slideshow out of them. So they're all going to be in here. And you might think like, okay, what's the point of this? How is this going to make my life easier? They are going to take a second, but they, they should upload pretty fast. So um, while these are uploading, I am going to show you what else you can do with folders. If you go back to projects and you go to folders, um, you can star certain folders so that when you are on this left hand side, this is not a great example because we're not out in the actual dashboard. Okay, when you're out on this left hand side, you can see all of your favorite folders just right off the bat. So all of the stuff that I access the most is going to be over here, but I have more folders than that. I just maybe don't want to see them all right away. So if I want to see all my folders, I go to projects and folders. Um, but I can star certain folders. So if you want to do that, you'll go into the folder and you will just click on this star. So if it's unstarred, it'll just be a clear star and then it'll be yellow if it is starred. So 
that's that. And we now are going to show, actually I'll go back into listings because that'll be a good one. Now I'm going to show you why this is so much better to have all of your listing photos in one separate folder. And I'm going to show you how to get to them. So this is just a listing template that I have. Um, we are going to I'm like, is that loaded completely? Cause that's not how it looked. Okay. Um, we're going to just duplicate, duplicate this. You know what? <laughs> this is probably not the best example. I kind of want one that has multiple photos on it. Um, so this one, for example, we are going to go into, okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. We are going to go to projects over here on this left grayish side, and we're going to go to folders, and then we're going to see 123 Main Street, and when we open it up, it's literally just 123 Main Street, whereas if we were to upload all of the listing pictures in here, they would get really, really lost, and let's say, for example, that I'm trying to go back and find it like I literally was. I've been working on new listing templates and I was trying to find these photos. And here's a couple of them right here. And they don't really go out of order necessarily, but I didn't upload them all at once. I only uploaded the ones that I needed for the social post. So, for example, I have like random listing photos all over the place and it's just not really convenient to find them. So what I really like doing is going to projects folders and then putting them all in one folder so that I can literally just come here. Sorry if I'm saying literally too much. I, I feel like I am, but it's just so easy that I just can't stop talking about it. Um, so you're just gonna drag and drop and then it's as easy as that can delete this gradient. Look at that. We can switch out the photos super easily. And I love this. If you are making a video, you can do this so easily. And they should upload in order. Um, but if not, make sure that when you go to when you go to your folder, so let's just say we're in here and we want to add new upload. So these are all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, but sometimes they will upload or they will add to your folder a little bit weird. Maybe they're in my date or something like that. So if you want all of the photos in order, this was really helpful when I was doing assistant work as well. You'll click on name. And then if you select them in order this way, that's the way they're gonna upload in. So. The photographer typically will put the photos in order of the way that they're walking through the house. So for example, this is the exterior. Now we're on the porch. Now we're in the living room. Now we're in the first bedroom that's off to the left. And so I could literally just click, there it is again, sorry. I could simply just click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they are all going to be in order. And then we end in the backyard. So I really like doing that. Um, and I highly recommend. Last thing I am going to show you in this video, and let me know if you like these types of videos. I really like making them. I have been doing this for so long that I just don't really think about it. And I feel like these are all such great tips that have just made things so much quicker and easier for me. So the last thing are Canva shortcuts. So for, like I mentioned before, if you click on the R key, it's going to pull up a square or a rectangle. I don't know exactly. This might be like the first color in your brand stuff, but that's what color it's going to be. Obviously, you can change it. You can do whatever you want with it. If you click C, that is going to be a circle. Um, if you click L, you're going to get a line. If you click T, you're going to be able to write text. I'm sure there are a couple other ones, other shortcuts that you can use, but those are my most used ones. So I, I seriously use them all the time. Like I, I don't think I ever really go over here to text and say add a text box because if I'm going to add text, I am just going to click in here and press T and then something's going to come up and it's just so convenient. 
Another thing that I do quite often is if I want to duplicate this um, checkbox, for example, I'm going to click on the Alt key and then hold it down and drag. And so that's going to duplicate this element for me. Um, I use all of those very often. So I hope this video was helpful. I am really looking forward to making more because I just love this stuff and I hope you do too. So yes, hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.